Imagine if we had the chance to look them in the eyes and say, Baby boy, I'm so sorry that you had to die, but thank you for your sacrifice. This iPhone 6, it sure is nice. This phone, it sure is grand. But look at your beaten baby hands, mining away at the rich coal tan. All so I can scroll through Instagram. Baby boy, I sure am a fan, but I'm sorry about all of your little friends and your mama and your papa too. But I just had to have the iPhone 6 in blue. It goes so well with my new Nike shoes. I'm so sorry that you had to die, but my laptop is just so nice. Right? It's nice, right? So nice that you would lay down your life for it and lay down the lives of your children for it. It's that nice. Right? Right? Human rights, they don't need them and they won't feed them and they probably won't survive the night, but oh my gosh, this HTC is just so fine. Baby girl, I'm so sorry that you had to lose your life, but it was worth it. It was so, so worth it. And I'm a work it. And my new Apple spaceship, I'm so way, way, way up high. I could almost touch the sky. Almost. But not quite. I must need an upgrade, right? Mr. Man, I'm so sorry, but you're going to have to die. But trust me, it will be worth the sacrifice. And I don't even know your name. But you're just like one in 5.4 million. It's all the same. Right? Oh my gosh, that HTC is just so nice. Just keep sending them down. Send them down to the mine. Mining away at the mine. No helmets, never mind. Mine, mine, mining away at the mine, mining away at our minds. What if that baby boy or baby girl was mine? Would it still be fine? Is it just because they're far away? Is that what we've come to today? If we can't see them, then we can't hear them and we can't feel their pain. But if they can't see us, then they can't show us that really we are all the same. And if we can't hear them, then they can't tell us that they're in pain. Would we listen anyway? And we still chase fame and we still want glory, still banging that same old tune, pro patria mori. Die for your country. Yes, die for my greed. Because money is all we need. And once we've dried up all of the rivers and we've destroyed all of the seas, at least you still have your HTC and I'll still have my iPhones 1, 2, 3 and 4, 5, 6 and 7 and I'll take them all to heaven and I'll find that little Congolese boy who died for age 11 and I'll show him what it was all for. And surely then he'll understand and he'll say, yes, your collection sure is grand and he'll understand why he had beaten baby hands and why all of his brothers and sisters were raped and destroyed because I just had to have these first class toys. And we say, we will make a change. They just have to hang on a minute, but they haven't got a minute. They're so way down, deep down in it. It's a sea of guns and war and conflict and these babies are swimming in it. Is it just because they're far? And when I come to the end of my journey, I'll show you all of the good that I've done. 
but I'll skip out the bit where I funded terrorism against your sons because I didn't mean to and it's just what people do. And I tried to be good, I really did try, but the media was always spinning lies and I didn't know quite who to believe, even though the facts were laid out for me to see. But anyway, that's my story now. Give me my glory. I'll be here waiting. Yeah, I'll just be here waiting. You might not have heard of coltan or conflict minerals in general, but you have them in your mobile phones, in your laptops, and possibly in other electronic devices that you own. Conflict mineral just means a mineral that's mined in an area of armed conflict and traded illicitly to fund the fighting. For instance, coltan, cobalt, gold, found in major quantities in some areas of the Congo. Amnesty International traced the use of cobalt in batteries for household brands back to mines in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, where children work in life-threatening conditions. Child miners as young as seven, carrying back-breaking loads in intense heat for hours, with no gloves, no face masks. When I found out, it made me feel sick. How does it make you feel? What are we going to do about it? Now, if we're being honest, we're not all going to fly out to the Congo tomorrow. Some of us don't even give to charities. Some of us don't even believe that when we do give to charity, the money goes where they say it's going. So what do we do? Global issues can sometimes just feel so huge and beyond us, but there is still a point in caring. I honestly believe that we can make a difference. We just have to be a little bit creative. As American businessman Jason Calacanis said, you have to have a big vision, then take small steps to get there. It's not about huge innovations. It's about a lot of little innovations, every day, every week, every month, making something a little bit better. I first found out about the Congo crisis from a Facebook video that my dad posted on his timeline. It made me really angry. Really, really angry and deeply sad. And I wanted to fix it straight away. I wanted to solve the whole crisis, but in order to make a big change, I had to start small. So I channeled all of that emotion into a poem. I wrote that spoken word poem as my own creative solution to a major problem. Further research led me to a Dutch social enterprise that designs conflict-free technology. So it can be done. There are conflict-free smartphones. Another creative solution to a major problem. You see, creative solutions and creative thinking allows us to rethink traditional approaches to problem solving. And it starts with L, for learn. Learn about the issue. Do some research around the subject. Let's start with Haiti. Haiti is a beautiful country in the Caribbean. Some might say Haiti is unlucky. Throughout the country's history, it's experienced natural disaster after natural disaster. Earthquakes, hurricanes, floods. But what can we do? Haiti is so far away, right? Well, a French entrepreneur who went to the country originally on relief aid after the 2010 earthquake was completely astounded by the creative community in Haiti, home to a wealth of visionary fine artists. So what he did, 
He collated some of their art, brought it here to the UK, and he exhi exhibits it all over London. So that consumers like you and me, by going to these exhibitions, not only can we see another side to the country, but we can buy amazing art and indirectly contribute to the Haitian economy to help them rebuild the country when disaster does strike. Another creative solution to a major problem. Now, I first performed my Congo poem at a coffee shop in London. It was founded by a Haitian entrepreneur who wanted to give back to his country. All of their coffee is sourced directly from Haiti. It's the only coffee shop in London to do that. And here's a fun fact for you. In 1788, Haiti supplied over half of the world's coffee. So something as simple as where we choose to buy our coffee or the kind of art that we buy can make a small contribution to a huge change. But learning is not enough. That knowledge alone is useless unless we can make connections between what we know. Once we've learned about the problem, we can move on to the second step. You, for understand. Once we've learned about the issue, we can begin to understand the need to take action. Until now, you might have been an innocent partaker, guilty only by association. But now that we know and we understand the need to take action, we can move on to the third step. S, for share. Share the information. Get other people on board. The more connections we make, the more creative we can be, and the better at problem solving we become. Once we have shared the information, we can begin to come up with create creative solutions together. Maybe you'll write a poem to raise awareness. Maybe you'll start a conflict-free technology company. Maybe you'll open a coffee shop. Me? I created a publication to share and promote creative solutions with entrepreneurship at the heart of it as the driving force for social change. Our ethos is lush, learn, understand, share, and the last piece of the puzzle, H, for heal. Both victims and the perpetrators need to heal. The victims from the trauma and us from our guilt. See, London is one of the richest cities in the world, so I know that here, where I live, there are more than enough resources to back up any creative solutions that we come up with. And not just material resources, but our minds. You see, one thought connects to another thought, connects to another thought, and so on, until you have a whole network. Our brains are literally built to innovate. Anyone can be creative. You don't have to be good at art. Creativity is about making connections. A wise man once said, creativity will save the world faster than politics. So, imagine if we could look them in the eyes and say, I could have made a change, but I didn't. Don't be a bystander. Exercise your creativity muscles, because currently the road to our future is broken, but it can and must be healed. So, if you remember nothing else, remember Lush. Learn, understand, share, so that we as a global family can heal. I hope you all have a Lush week. Thank you.